Uh, Before Tonde, can I have someone else? No, correct. So I'm, I'm driving past her, but I remember we're gonna be judged on our actions as they are recorded in the in the book of life. And I remember one one verse I think particular was in Revelations, but it's, I don't know Revelations twenty verse something. I'm not so sure right now because I'm still driving. It's okay. Just give me the what the six uh points and then i can give you the scriptures you say that we shall what be judged according to oh because of uh like our actions what we do okay, so that's that's the law the records the, the, personal mm -hmm. acts yes shall be kept. Acts. so the scriptures there matthew 12 verse 36 luke 12 verse 2 to 9 uh, John 3, verse 18, and Revelations 20, verse 12, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 to 14. Everything we do, no matter how small, we are going to give an account before God, which means even be giving offering. When we give our offering, heaven is watching. Whatever you do, in the house of God is being recorded. It's being recorded. Go to those scriptures. They will highlight to you whatever your attitude, your motive for doing things, whatever you do is being recorded. Right. Give me another one. Uh, you... so Law of memory. Yeah. Law of memory, yes, Luke 16, verse 25. Yes, thank you. Another one. Do you want to explain a little bit about the law of memory? Who gave me law of memory? Can you explain a little bit what you are talking about, about the law of memory? That was an anonymous person, but we don't know who that was. Do you want to explain you yourself? No, uh, I, I'll, I'll give, I will give wrong interpretation, but. No, let me give you the scripture and then look at the scripture and then come back to me and explain to me what is the law of memory, right? Luke, Luke 16, 25, right? Yes, can you read it out? Then you can explain to me. Okay. Let me put it up. You are driving. Let me read it for you. Sure. Luke 16, verse 25. But Abraham re replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things. While well, Lazarus received the bad things, but now he's comforted here and you are in agony. You remember the story uh, of rich men, uh, divas, and poor men, Lazarus? Uh -huh. Yeah. So do you remember what is law of memory? Uh, I would say it's more of uh, 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 human, human nature. Uh, uh, how fast are you help me, please? I can't. I want to hear you. I gave you a scripture. I explained it. Who wants to help Evans? What is the law of memory? Remember, we talked about this when we were we were talking about the judgment. Law of memory. Who remembers the law of memory? Anyone? Anyone who remembers the law of memory? The great white throne judgment? Anyone remembering anything? So we're going to go again, all of us, and listen again to the uh, teaching 
and see uh, what we learned about last week. Let's go to the next one. Anyone who remembers a third one? There are six of them. The law of character. The what? The law of character. The law, uh, uh, Mama, sorry, your, your phone is kind of muffled. I think you need to kind of like push back a little bit so that I, I can hear you. I didn't sorry, hear Pastor, you. I said the law of character. The law of uh, character. The law of character. Character. The law of character. Yes. The, are you saying the law of character? Yes. Okay. Who agrees with what she said? Who agrees with what she said? She said the law of character. Who yes. can agree with her and say yes? The law of character. We learned about the law of character. I'll give you the scriptures, Hebrews 3, verse 8 to 10, Ephesians 4, verse 19. Who agrees or who wants to explain, oh mama, do you want to explain the law of character? So please give me the scripture again, please. Um, Hebrews. Hebrews 3, verse 8 to 10, Thank and you. Ephesians 4, verse 19. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 19. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of greed. Having lost, oh, this is Ephesians 4.19, and then there's Hebrews 3, verse 8 to 10. Yes, Pastor. I'm, I'm, thank you. Anyone who wants to try? Do you, do you want to try, Mama, what it means I, of character? Yes, Pastor, I can try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here yeah, you mentioned about what, that we, that we should not harden our heart like like in in the times of Moses that was, like, in the time of Moses that the, our ancestors had in their heart that if we hear the word of God we should try to change we should we should believe and change we should not harden our heart because everything we we we, we, we everything we, we we are hearing God is God is God is taking note of everything we we, we do everything we say God is is God is it's God. God is recording it, so so we have to change. We have to change. Amen. Thank you. You explained Hebrews chapter three eight. Do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the times of testing in the wilderness, where your ancestors tested and tried me. Though for forty years they saw what I did, that is why I was angry with that generation. I said their hearts are always going astray and they have not known my ways. That's the one you're trying to explain. Thank you, yes, Mama. Pastor. Anybody else who yes, wants Pastor. to help her to explain law of character? Tonde, do you want to try? Do you have your notes? Uh, yes, uh, I have my notes. Do you want to explain law of character? Do you want to explain both law of character if you took your notes, law of character and law of memory together? Uh, I think for the law of character and law of memory, I only have the scriptures. I, I don't think I have the detail. Uh, I, I mean, I have a lot of detail on the law of conscience, but the law of character, I think you only gave us scriptures on the law of memory. No, I explained. I really took time. Go and listen to the videos. I really took time to explain all those things. Okay, you so you gave us law of conscience, Romans 2, verse 12 to 16. I encourage you guys to go again and uh, read, uh, listen to the video, to the recording. Law of conscience, Romans 2, verse 12 to 16 is one of them. Then I gave you the law of Moses. Romans 2 again, verse 12 to 16, I use the same scripture. 
and then the gospel are also used through the same scripture, Romans 2, verse 12 to 16. Then the last one I gave you was records of personal acts shall be kept in heaven. In that, uh, that's the one uh, Piola, Piola uh, explained. So those six of them, I encourage you uh, to go and take your time to listen again to that tape. That will be very helpful for you to know the meaning of that judgment that is going to come. So right now, let me go to chapter 21. Hopefully people are benefiting and for your benefit to go back and read those things that we are learning, it will help you uh, rather than just coming to class and you are not benefiting anything out of this. So I encourage all of you to go listen again to those tips. So we are now coming to the almost to the end of this um, book of Revelation. Today I'll start on the book of Revelation chapter 21, the eternal state. So Revelation 21 has speaks of the new heavens and the new earth as well as the new city called New Jerusalem, which shall descend from heaven to the new earth. Um, I'm going to ask someone uh, to read Revelation 21, this one. <laughs> Okay, someone to read Revelations 21, this one. Uh, it reads, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw... Hmm. That's this one. Yeah, this to do this too. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for a husband. Mm -hmm. So, one, chapter 1 and chapter 2, uh, Revelation 21, uh, it's speaking about the new heaven and the new earth, as well as the new city called the new Jerusalem, which shall descend. which is up to chapter 22 the last one we will we, we'll move into what we call the eternal state the eternal state right so a new heaven and a new earth shall replace the present heaven and the present earth which will pass away by the process of being bent up okay so two other scripture verses that speak of the creation of the new heaven and the new earth. It's, someone read me Isaiah 65, verse 17. And then someone get me 2 Peter 3, verse 18. Are we going to do numbers today so that everybody gets involved? Number one, Tonde. Number two, Sister Priscilla. Number three, Tolowana. Number four, Yeve. Number five, Ivy. Number six, Shepherd. Number seven, Evans. Number eight, Nash. Number nine. Number 12, I'm not sure who is my phone. My phone, you are number 12. I don't know who that is. But 13 is Marion. Number 14, it's Ose. Okay. Number 14 is Ose. Who joined us now? Who doesn't have a number? Who doesn't have a number? We are 16, so there are many people. Two people who don't have a number, right? Okay, maybe the person dropped. That's fine. So, number one, uh, Tonde Isaiah 65 17. Then, number two, give me two Peter three. Verse 13, I'm just going to give you all the uh, scriptures that are going to be read. Number 3, 72, verse 8. Number 4, Isaiah 11, verse 9 and verse 11. Number 5, Ezekiel 47, 
verses 8 to 20. Number 6, Ezekiel 48, verse 28. Isaiah 48, verse 28. Sorry, Pastor, I didn't get mine. There was an interruption. So that was Ezekiel. Ezekiel 48, 28. You are number six, right? Yep. Ezekiel 48, 28. Number seven, Zechariah 9, verse 10. Number eight, Ezekiel, Zechariah, sorry. Zechariah 14, verse 8 again uh then i have number um, nine right am i right psalm 19 verse one number nine number ten number ten second peter three verse seven to thirteen i hope you are writing down because you're not gonna be asking me i'll be going through and calling out scriptures Hoping you you caught yours. Uh, number 11, right? Matthew 19, 28. That's number 11. Number 12, number 12. 1 Peter 3, verse 7. Number 13. Revelation 21, verse 2. That's number sorry, four, it's my turn. What was that? Number, just wait, let me finish. Number 13, I gave you, right? Yes. Okay, so I'm on number 14, right? Yes, you're on number 14. John 14, verse 1 to 3. So, Piola, you were not allocated a number, right? Was that Piola? I'm number 10, but I didn't hear it. Ah, uh, I don't even remember, my dear. <laughs> you will hear it in the process. I don't even remember because I've been going through processes here. I've been giving you most of what I'm going to go through. So I'm going to start with the first one, number one. I uh, think it's Tonde. Give me Isaiah 65, verse 17. Uh, Isaiah 65 verse 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. Mm -hmm. Remember, I create a new heaven and a new earth. Um, Finish the whole line. The former things shall not be remembered. They will not come to mind anymore. That shows and is actually supporting that the new earth, there shall be a new earth and a new heaven. Let's hear what Peter says, 2 Peter 3, verse 13, number 2, Sister Priscilla, I think. 2 Peter 3, verse 13, I read. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Amen. Amen. So, the new heavens and the new earth are not to be confused with the millennium. Don't confuse them with the millennium. The millennium is going to precede the new heavens and the new earth. So there will be no sea in the new earth, okay? No sea. Do you see and the there was are not aligning with the other trees? Do you see that? Yola, can you meet your phone for now? Okay, so they, 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 there's not going to be, there's no more, there's not going to be any sea. Um, that's written in Psalm 72. Who is reading, writing, reading Psalm 72, verse 8? And then I will have someone read 11, Isaiah 11, verse 9. And then I'll have, I want you to read in that sequence. And then the next one, Ezekiel 47, verse 8 to 20. When that one finishes, let's go to Ezekiel I think that's Shepherd 48, 28 from you. Number seven should give us Zechariah 9, verse 10. And um, the last one gives us Zechariah 14, verse 8. The sea is mentioned in many times of this in relation to the millennium. 
So let's hear Psalm 72 verse 8. Uh, Psalm 72 verse 8 says, May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Isaiah 11 9. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my, they will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 47, this is 8 to 20. Then he said to me, These waters flow towards the eastern region, goes down into the valley and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are, are healed, and it shall be that very living thing that moves. Wherever the rivers go, will leave. There will be a very great multitude of fish because these waters go there. For they will be healed and everything will live wherever the, the rivers go. It shall be that it shall be that fishermen will stand by it from Ingidai to England. There will be places for spreading their nets. Their fish will be the same kinds as the fish of the great sea, exceedingly many, but its swamps and marshes will be healed. They will be living, they'll be given over to the salt along the along the banks of the rivers on the side, and that will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their, their leaves will not their leaves will not weather, and their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month because their waters flow, the water flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for medicine. Waters of the land. Mm -hmm. That says the Lord. That says the Lord God. These are the borders by which you shall. No, 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 no. You are done. Um, for the your last verse is verse twelve. Marriage right? eight to twenty. Yeah, you said. Go ahead. Uh, that says the Lord. The Lord God. These are the borders by which you shall divide the land and in your sense among the 12 tribes of Israel. Joseph shall have two positions and you shall inherit it equally with one another. For I raised my hand in an oath, in an oath to give it to your fathers and, his, and this land shall fall to you as your inheritance. This shall be the border, the border of the land on the north from the great sea by the road of Hilton, as one goes to Zedad, Hamath, Beroth, Sibram, um, which is between the border of Damascus and the border of Hamath, the Hazar Hatcon, which is on the border of Haruna. That's the border that shall be from the sea to Hazar on uh, the border of Damascus and as for the north, northward, it is the border of Hamad. This is the north side. On the east side, you shall mark out the border from between Haran and Damascus and between Gali and the land of Israel among the Jordan and along the eastern side of the sea. This is the east side. The south side towards the south shall be from Samar to the waters of Meriba and Kadesh along, along the, books, the brooks of the Great Sea. This is the south side towards the south. The west side shall be the Great Sea from the southern boundary until one comes to the point opposite Hamath. This is the west side. Thank you so much. Um, if you read this whole verse, this is where immigration laws must copy from because um, a lot of uh, this scripture, if you read it, the whole of Ezekiel 47, you will see how um, the issue of foreigners in a foreign land should be like, and like on verse 21, God is actually talking how they should handle citizens 
that people should be given citizenship. And when they're given citizenship, they should enjoy the benefits in that nation. So um, it's one of the scriptures that is highly used in immigration um, in some of the nations. Okay, let's hear 48 of Ezekiel. Chapter 48, Ezekiel. Who is next? Ezekiel 48. So, uh, Ezekiel 48, 28. Mm -hmm. Okay, I shall read. The southern boundary of Gad will run south from Tamar to the waters of Meribah Kadesh, then along the wadi of Egypt and the Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. Just read 29 for others to understand. 29, this is the land you are to allot as an inheritance to the tribes of Israel. And these will be their portions, declares the sovereign Lord. Yeah, this is, this is happening after the, during the millennium, right? Um, give me Zachariah, who is reading next? Zachariah 9, verse 10. Uh, that is me. It says, I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem and the battle bow will be broken. You will proclaim peace to the nation. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Then give us Zechariah 14. 14. Zechariah 14, verse 8. Mm -hmm. On that day, life-giving waters will flow out from Jerusalem, half toward the Dead Sea and half toward the Mediterranean, flowing continuously in both summer and winter. So the sea is mentioned here many times in relation to the millennium, right? So with the absence of any geographic identification and the absence of a sea, the new earth will obviously be entirely different, okay? So the earth's habitable area shall be increased by more than three quarters, which is the fraction that is now taken up by the oceans in the arid places of the earth. So I'm excited there'll be less seas, uh, but those who love fishing and you no know, sea life, tough. So what about this, the beauty of these seas and the majesty of marine life? What's gonna happen? Will God just cause these creatures to be extinct? Do not these scriptures of the oceans and the wonders of the oceans, the depth that show the glory of God just as the heavens do, will they just be like, it's done? I think, let's have someone read us, Psalm 19, verse 1. This is where we must summarize the fact that there will not be on the new earth does not preclude the fact that they will be located to other planets of the eternal worlds. Give us Psalm 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. The mm -hmm. skies proclaim the work of his hands. Huh? Read again, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Mm -hmm. Right? So the creation of the new heavens and the new earth shall precede the burning up of the present heaven and the present earth by fire. Peter has already described this great event, okay? So one thing that I want us to understand on verse one, where my mange reads, it kind of like summarize the fact that there will not be on the new earth these seas and oceans. And there's no way in the scriptures that is written that the marine, marine life is going to be located in a certain planet. There's nothing, there's that argument that has been going on with scholars. Some are saying the marine world is going to be offered another planet. There's no way in the scripture that is written of that. So I'm not going to, unless someone has a scripture that talks about what's gonna happen when the seas 
are no longer here on the new earth. I don't know. So um, give us Second Peter 3, verse 7 to 13. What number are you, my monkey? Who is reading Second Peter? My monkey, what number are you? I already read Psalms 19, verse 1. Yes, what number are you? Nine. Okay, so 10, that's Piola. So 2 Peter 3, verse 7 to 13. 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Verse 7. Verse 7 to 13. 13, it says, By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with this promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. Amen. This is what it is going to be like um, the day of the Lord. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The works that are there in the earth shall be burned up. So looking for and uh, just looking at this uh, teaching, the burning up of the present heaven and the burning up by burning up of the present heaven and the present earth by fire is called the renovation. I call it the renovation God is going to revamp, to renovate the heavens and the earth. Revamping or renewing the heavens and the earth. A proponent of the renovation theory quote that I love in the Bible is Matthew 19.28. Who is reading Matthew 19.28? What does God call this renovation, this renewal, the revamping of the earth? What does God call it? In Matthew oh, nineteen twenty-eight, Matthew nineteen twenty-eight, mm -hmm. Jesus said to them, "Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on His glorious throne, you who have followed Me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel." Mm -hmm. uh, my version, I like the KJV on that one. It says, "And Jesus said unto them." Verily I say unto you, that you which have followed me in the regeneration, that's the word I'm looking for, regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, you also shall sit up twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So the great, um, the, the Greek word, for regeneration in, in Greek is called um, palingenesia, palingenesia, I don't know, palingenesia, P-A-L-I-N-G-E-N-E-S-I-A. I don't know how you pronounce it. I call it palingenesia, 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 or there's a silent G, I don't know. Polynesia, I don't know, but that's the word in Greek that talks about regeneration, 
renewal, renovation. So it carries the sense of renewal, renewing again. But this new creation is also described as a new heaven and a new earth. So it is a totally new heaven and a totally new earth and not the present heaven and the present earth. But it's going to be renovated. This is also reiterated in the additional statement for the first heaven in the in the earth uh, where passed we shall pass away. Moreover, the regeneration Christ spoke about must properly be timed during the time of the millennium, which will precede the creation of the new heaven and the new earth. Peter again states that the time of the burning up of the present heaven and earth is occurring during the day of the Lord, which proves to us that the phrase the day of the Lord is not a single day of 24 hours, but a length span of time. So this burning up of the present heaven and present earth shall occur at the same time that the great white throne judgment will take place. For Peter tells us that the present heaven and the present earth shall be engulfed by fire against the judgment day in the perdition of ungodly men. Uh, who is reading 2 Peter 3, verse 7? Pastor, I just read that. 2 Peter 3, 7? To 18. No, chapter 2. 2 Peter 3, verse 7. I just want verse 7. I gave it to someone to read. Number 11. Did I, I give... read from 2 Peter 3, verse 7 to 13. That was number 10. Number 11. Who is number 11? I'm number 11, Pastor. I had um, Matthew um, 19.28. Matthew, okay. All right. So I think it was... So Piola, can you read verse 7 again? Yeah. 2 Peter 3. Okay, I'll read it. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll read... Uh, verse 7, but the this version, I don't like this version. It says, um, the verse 7 says, By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Okay. I like this version, KJV, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. That's the vision I wanted. Perdition of the ungodly men. So the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men is the day of the great white uh, throne judgment. That's the day. So since the heavens shall not be bent, uh, since the heavens uh, shall be bent, those are, uh, who are situated in, um, uh, uh, in what do you call it, uh, together on the earth, um, in the atmosphere or the atmospheric interstellar, and the planetary heavens, uh, it is safe to summarize that the saints shall be in the heaven of God as the present heaven and earth will be bent up or they will be under divine protection, just as Noah and his family were divinely protected in the dark earth in the universal um, um, uh, deluge. I'm trying to say the question that comes to mind is so, okay, if the earth and the heaven is going to be passing away and there's going to be the burning of the earth and the burning of the heaven. So where are we going to be if this happens, when this um, old earth is going to pass away and the old heaven is going to pass away? So where are we going to be? So I'm saying those that are situated in contiguity with the earth. That is the atmospheric 
or the what we call uh, those who study um, stars, they call them the interstellar and the planetary heavens. They will be we we we, we will be under God's uh, divine protection. I'm not sure whether he's gonna build an ark for all of us. I'm not sure what is gonna happen, but we are going to be protected just the same way people were protected during the time of Noah. So one way or the other, God is going to shield those who are already in his uh, position. So the fire will burn the earth and its works, all products and byproducts of sin, such as bacteria, germs, viruses, troublesome diseases that carry insects and pests, thorns and thistles, all other offending things will be burned. Everything that is painful to humanity will be burned. After the burning up of the present heaven and earth, a new heaven will then emerge. Can someone read Revelation 21, verse 2? Revelations 21, verse 2, what does it say? Okay, it says, And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for a husband. So a new city will descend from heaven to the new earth. It is the holy city, and it is called New Jerusalem. So it will be so magnificent and so exquisitely beautiful that it is described as a bride adorned for her husband. So the holy city, which is the New Jerusalem, shall be the great fulfillment of the promises of God to his saints concerning their eternal dwelling place. I can someone read for me John 14, verse 1 to 3. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. John 14, verse 1 to 3 reads, Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, also um, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I not have told you that I'm going to, there to pre prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me that you may also be where I am. Mm -hmm. You see, he, that's a description of where he is going, what is going to happen. He's telling us what it shall be like. Hebrews 11, verse 8 to 16. Hebrews 11, verse 8 to 16. Who is reading Hebrews 11, verse 8 to 16? Also, were you the last one? Yep, I was um, number 14, so I was the last one. Number 14. So we haven't read Fari. You're going to be number 15. Marian, did you read? Uh, Marian's internet has problems. Okay. So we also haven't read. Manjengba, that's Tapiwa there, right? I see two manjengwas. Yeah, that's that's that be where you're gonna be number three, number what, 16, right? Okay, where is before me again? Fari, this, Fari, uh, did you hear me? Who else didn't read? Fari, is she there? <coughs> okay, you be number uh, three. I don't know uh, if Fari... Pa Pastor, he said Hebrews chapter what? 11, verse 8 to 16. Verse, verse 8. Uh -huh, to 16. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 says, By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he, wa he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah 
who was past childbearing age was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and ye as, a, as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country, out of, uh, country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Instead, they were lo longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Thank you. Thank you, Tapiwa. Uh, I think this is a very powerful verse um, to always think about. It's a very, very powerful verse. And also, let's hear Hebrews chapter 12, verse 18 to 24. Farah, are you ready? Is she going to read? Okay, I'll read um, Hebrews 12, verse 18 to 24. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that bend with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice that heard entreated that the, okay, another one, the vision that is not KJV. Can you read this one? I can read, Pastor. Yes, Hebrews 12, verse 18 to 24. We have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who had it begged that no further word be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded. Even if an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. Verse 22. But we have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. We have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. We have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Amen. Praise and worship. This is how you praise God. This is what you need to understand as worshipers. When you worship God, that's how you worship him. These are the things to understand. Hallelujah. Described, you know, he is God's firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God who is the judge of all people and to the spirits of God, of good people, made perfect. You have come to Jesus, who arranged the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that promises much better things than does the blood of Abel. I, I love this, um, this scripture. I love it very much. Uh, it's a very powerful verse. I found in my life I can't resist it. Every time I read it, I feel something in my spirit rising. So it will, Jerusalem will be the capital city of the new earth and the universe. So the city has foundations and its builder is God. Hebrews 11, we had that Hebrews 11 on verse 10. So the saints, they seek for this city to come. That is written on Hebrews chapter 13 on verse 4. Marriage is to be honored by all, and husbands and wives must be faithful to each other. God will judge those who are immoral and to those who commit adultery. What it means is that the saints must seek to come to this honor of the marriage, the marriage between Christ and the body of Christ, which is the church. Amen. Hebrews 21, verse 3 to 4. Who wants to read Hebrews 21? 
sorry, Revelations 21, verse 3 to 4. Who wants to read Revelations 21, verse 3 to 4? Revelation. Oh, go ahead. Okay, let's go. Okay. Who's ready? Revelations 21, 3 to 4. And I heard a loud, a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold the, tab, uh, what is it called? Behold the tab, tab uh, hold on. And I heard a loud voice from heaven say, Behold the tablet, tabernacle I can, of God is with the man and he, he will do it with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and their great God and, their, and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no cry, no crying. There shall be no more pain from, for their former things has passed away. Amen. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself shall be with them and be their God. We shall be, he shall be our God. And God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be any more pain for the former things are passed away. So the holy city, New Jerusalem, is called here the tabernacle of God. So God himself will tabernacle in it and he will dwell with all his saints in it. So God's people will never again experience any sorrow or pain, nor will they cry, grieve, or die. So God is going to wipe away all our tears. Um, uh, the former things would have passed away. In New Jerusalem, there will be none of the futures that so characterize the present earth. So Revelation chapter 21, verse 5, verse 5 to 6. Verse 5 to 6 says, Then the one who sits on the throne said, And now I make all things new. He also said to me, Write this, because these words are true and can be trusted. Uh, verse 6, And he said, It is done. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. To anyone who is thirsty, I'll give the right to drink from the spring of, wa of the water of life without paying for it. I'll give unto that, unto him that is thirsty of the fountain of water of life freely. So God will make all things new and John is told to affirm by putting it down in writing that his words are true and faithful. So God tells John that it is done. Revelation 21 and on verse 7, those who win the victory will receive this from me. I'll be their God and they'll be my children. <laughs> so that means the overcomer is now being promised that you will inherit all things. The Almighty will be your God and you shall be God's son. There is a great inheritance awaiting all who love God and overcome the world in their love in their obedience and loyalty to God. And then verse 8, it says, But cowards, traitors, perverts, murderers, the immoral, those who practice magic, those who worship idols, and all liars, the place for them is the lake burning with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So in contrast, no wicked people will be in the new earth, let alone in New Jerusalem. So the unworthiness of the wicked to partake of God's glorious inheritance is described as eight particulars here. The apostle Paul mentions that the unrighteous shall, uh, in, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Number one, uh, Tonde, we're going to go to the second order again. Uh, read for me, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 to 11. Then number two, Read for me Galatians 5, verse 19 to 21.
Number three, read Revelation 21, verse 9. Number four, read for me Revelation 21, verse 10 to 11. Number five, read Revelation 21, verse 12 to 14. And then uh, number six, read Hebrews 1, verse 7. Number seven, read Hebrews 13, verse 14. Number eight, give me John 4, 22. And we should be done today. So start, um, Tonde, give me the first one. Praise the Lord. So uh, first Corinthians chapter... Six, verse 9 to 11. Oh, six. Yeah. Uh, verse 9. Uh, verse 9. Know ye that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be, be not deceived. N uh, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminates, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. No thieves, no covetous, no, no, no drunkards, no uh, revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye, ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Praise God. Thank you. Galatians 19, 5, verse 19 to 21. Who is number two? Galatians 5 verse 9 21 I read. Now the works of the flesh are man manifest, which are this adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, uh, virus, violence, emulations, wrath, strife, sed sedition, seditions, heresies, envy murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they, that they which do such things shall not inherit, inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. This is yes. what God is saying. Apostle Paul is mentioning that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Human nature is quite plain. This is what he's talking about. Human nature, this is what we call human nature. It shows it itself in immoral, in filthy, in indecent actions, worshipping of idols, witchcraft. People become enemies and they fight, which is violence. They become jealous, angry, and ambitious. They are envious. They get drunk and they have orgies and do other things like this. And he warns us, he says, I warn you, as I have done before, those who do these things will not enter the kingdom of God, will not inherit the kingdom of God. So we are being warned here, brothers and sisters, these are some of the things God openly show us to say these are evil things, if you want to make it what we are learning in this book of Revelation, don't do these things. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I didn't know when I showed this verse, I was shocked because you see how we downplay, how we downplay scriptures. But God is so open. If he doesn't like something outrightly, he just points it out as it is. So we have to watch out. These are the works of the flesh. These are some of the works of the flesh that has been pointed. Um, anger, self-ambitious, um, parties, separate into parties and groups. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you call that, but um, that's what are some of the things as believers we need to highlight and say, God help me so that I do the right thing. We is going to read uh, Revelation 21, verse 9. I will read Revelations 
21 verse 9. Uh -huh. It says, then one of the seven angels who had the seven balls filled with seven last plagues came to me and talked with me saying, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Read it again. <clears throat> then one of the seven angels who had the seven balls filled with the last seven plagues came to me and talked with me saying, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Mm -hmm. So one of the seven angels of the uh, apocalypse, which had the seven bowels of the seven last plague, you remember, promises to take John to behold the bride so that he can, he can see the bride, the lamb's wife. This now will help us to clarify what the bride, remember, we are trying to figure out who is the bride of Christ, right? So the lamb's wife is in Revelation 21, verse 10 to 11. Can someone read that? Revelation 21, verse 10 to 11. I got that. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel like jasper clear as crystal right so i want to reiterate and say it again the lamb's wife is shown to be the great city remember we were i gave you a lot of theories about the uh the lamb's wife right uh, i argued and saw you some arguments about it now this verse is clear the lamb's wife is shown to be that great city the holy Jerusalem. It shall descend out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. So the city's light shall be like unto a most precious stone, right? Dazzling in its splendor and glowing like a precious gem. So the city shall be crystal clear like the jasper. Can someone read verse 12 to 14 of Revelations? Also, she had a great and high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates and names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of, children, of the children of Israel. Three, great, three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, on the south and three gates on the west. Now the wall of the city had 12 foundations and one of them, one on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Amen. So the city has a great and high wall and 12 gates, three gates on each of its four sides. The 12 gates shall be manned by 12 angels that will stand, um, that will be stationed there. So the angels manning the gates will not do so as guards to provide security for the city will face no security threat whatsoever. So the angels will man the gates is a way of demonstrating the city's dignity and prestige. So these angels and most of the uh, others will minister to those who would have become the heirs of salvation, which is in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7. Anyone with that one? Hebrews 1, verse 7. Hebrews 1, verse 7. Uh, so Hebrews 1, verse 7. In speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. Amen. Uh, do you have this 13 to 14? Hebrews 1 verse 13. Mm -hmm. To which of the angels did God ever say, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Verse 14. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Mm -hmm. Are they not all angels? Ministering spirits sent to save those who will inherit salvation. So the names of the 12 tribes of Israel shall be written on the 12 gates. This shows that saved Israel shall be part of the inhabitants of the holy city. God made eternal covenants with Israel. And by way of reminding us of this, he ordered the inscribing of the names of the 12 tribes of Israel on the 12 gates. So Jesus told the Samaritan woman 
Remember, at the well of Jacob, that salvation is of the Jews. Remember in John 4 verse 22, Jesus Christ, the Messiah and the Savior of mankind proceeded from the Jews, right? He came from the Jews. So salvation was made available through Jesus who was born as the seed of Abraham and so to cause us to be cognizant of this fact that God makes the names of the 12 tribes of Israel an eternal inscription of the 12 gates. So the 12 gates shall be built in the great wall that will encompass that city and shall rest upon 12 foundations. On the 12 foundations shall be written the names of the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ. So the wall, like uh, the wall, like the angels, women um, will be manning the gates, will not be so um, for the sake of security, like I said, of the inhabitants of the city. Like I said, there's not going to be any thieves. There's not going to be uh, not going to be any uh, murderers. There's not going to be there's not going to be any gangs or gangsters who are going to be um, moving around and threatening people. It is not going to be like that. So there's going to be peace. There's going to be grace. There's going to be love. God is going to show mercy to His people one more time so the war will only enhance the dignity the prestige the splendor and glory of the eternal city we hear this in verse 15 in 16 who can read for me revelation 21 verse 15 and 16 and we're gonna close here revelation 21 15 in 16 quiet i can read it um, revelation 21 15 the angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city its gates and its walls 16 the city was laid out like a square as long as as long as it was as wide he measured the city with a rod and found it to be twelve thousand stag stagnia in length and as wide at and as high as it is as wide and high as it is long. I, I, you know, I love God. He is into math, which we should ask for that grace to be upon us, some like me. <laughs> so the city shall be a cube. It's like a cube in exact square, right? So it shall be four square. That is, it shall be as wide as it is long, as it is high. So it shall be 12,000 furlongs in length, breadth, and height, and a great wall shall encircle it. So by conversion, eight furlongs makes a mile. And so 12,000 furlongs will be like 1,500 miles or 2,400 kilometers. This is about the distance from Cape Town in the southern tip of South Africa to DRC, Democratic Republic of the Congo, and the equator, that is, um, I think, to the north, north from Luanda, Luanda, at the Atlantic coast, to a few kilometers of the Tanzanian town of Mbeya. If you know, if you are looking, I'm looking at a map, Africa. <laughs> and then west to coast, right? So in other words, the holy city shall be big enough to accommodate South Africa, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Namibia, Zambia, Angola, um, DRC. If we take the current combined populations of these countries as a basis of assessment, then we have more than 150 million people, people that will reside in New Jerusalem. Oh, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus Christ. And it is a city. New Jerusalem will certainly have a myriad of saints residing in it. Something that the measurements we are given for the holy city are a figurative or symbolical representation. The idea being that the city is on the most magnificent scale and with the largest proportions and that the description here is adopted mainly to indicate the vastness without any idea 
that it will be understood literally. So I, for one, find no hint of what we read being symbolical or figurative here. I read on um, Revelation 21 verse 17, says he measured the wall thereof in 140 and four cubits, according to the uh, measure of men, that is of the angel, right? Some difficulty is encountered in the disproportionate measurements of the height of the wall as compared with the height of the city. So the measurements of the city are given as 12,000 furlongs on its depth, breadth, and height, which translates to about 1,500 miles all around. That's why the height of the city, 1,500 miles, and height of the wall is given as 144 cubits or anything between 64.8 to 100 meters. So since the length and breadth of the wall are equal to the length and breadth of the city, it is the height of the wall that most scholars think is referred to in the measured measurement stated in Revelation 21, verse 17. But it is the width and not the height of the wall. It is what is intended by the measurements of the wall given, given in um, uh, verse 17, 21, verse 17. Someone read for me this um, 17, Revelation 21, 17. So if the wall is as long and as wide as the city, why can it not be as high as the city? So you will notice that nothing is stated explicitly about the length and the width of the wall. So why must its height be thought to be what is intended on verse 17? Can someone read that for me? Revelations. 21. Revelations, 20, <clears throat> Revelations 21 verse 17 says, then he, measured, then he measured its wall, 140 cubits, according to the measure of a man that is of an angel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He measured the wall, found them to be 216, they call that, some they call it 216 feet thick, according to human standard used by the angel, right? So just read again, verse 18 and 20, Tully. Uh, verse 18 says, <clears throat> the construction of its, of its wall was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper. The second, um, sapphire, and the second and the third, um, Charles, Charles, Charles Sidoni, and then the fourth emerald. So that's up to that's up to verse nineteen, Pastor. Do you want me to continue to? Yeah, do, do verse twenty. And then the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth a burial, the ninth top. Topaz, the tenth um, chrysoprase, the eleventh yes, yes. jacinth, and then the twelfth um, Amethy amethyst. Yes. So the wall of the city is made of jasper, and the city itself shall be pure gold and to clear, my God, and to clear glass. Can you imagine the beauty? So the foundations of the wall of the city shall be garnished with all kinds of precious stones. The description of the foundations of the wall is presented. The foundation, foundation one, it will be built with jasper. It's a semi-transparent green stone. Oh my God. You see all the jewelers, jewels you see here, some are not real, but these are going to be real, real gems. So foundation two will be sapphire, a blue stone. You know how beautiful a sapphire looks like. Foundation three shall be chalcedon. It's a yellow red stone. And then foundation four will be emerald, a translucent green stone. And then foundation five will be sardonyx. That's a bluish, it's a bluish white and red stone. Then foundation six will be sardius. It's a blood red stone. And then foundation seven, chrysolite a dusky green stone. My God, God is full of gems. 
Foundation 8 Beryl, it's a transparent green stone. Uh, then Foundation 9 Topaz, a pale green stone with yellow. Then the one that is difficult to pronounce on Foundation 10, it's Chrysopras, Chrysoprasus, which is a yellowish green stone. Then number 11, Jacinth, a red stone with yellow. And finally, number 12, Amethyst, a purple, violet, and red stone. So verse 21 and 22, the 12 gates were made of pearls, several gates, right? They were made of pearls. The street of the city were pure gold, and it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein for the lord god almighty and the lamb are the temple of it oh my god so each of the 12 gates are going to be single giant pearls and the streets of the city pure gold this is the beauty that the lord is showing us so i want to end here i'll continue to talk about the temple when we meet next week and i believe by the grace of god we will finish chapter 22 next week by the grace of god we'll finish chapter 22 but i just wanted you to understand the beauty that is yet to come so those people who are christians who don't know why are we saying we want to be christians is it because we just want a breakthrough today and till done and that's the end of it why do you want to be Christians? We want to be Christians. It's more than going to church. It's more than having a name written in the church. It's more than being in the choir. It's more than being known or having a position in church. We are doing this because we want to be part of what God is explaining to us in chapter 21. We want to be there when the saints go marching in. I want to be part of them. I want to be one of them. So how do I maintain my life to be able to be at the end of the day? One of them is through knowing and understanding how to avoid the works of the flesh and following the works of the spirit. Galatians chapter 5 has given us some of those things that will hinder us on that day. We want to enter. We want to be in the kingdom of God. So I encourage each and every one of you to continue to strive. Let's continue to do good by the grace of God. We will make it together. We will be there together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyone who benefited today or who feel enlightened in your spirit about chapter 21, what life is going to be with Christ after this life? Are you surprised? Are you enlightened? Are you encouraged? Are you getting the knowledge that you need for 2021? Thank you, Pastor. Ivy, you got it. God bless you. One. Yeah, thank you. I just want to say that it's very like encouraging me to want to know more about God and mm. know who he is, not just read the Bible and come to Bible study just to sit here, but I want to know more what he does. What's the purpose of us living, having eternal life? That's true. That's true, Ivy. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. What is the purpose that I'm born again? What am I born again for? What is the purpose of going to church? Why do I go to church? Why do I do what I do in church? So as we understand this, we take off our eyes from people and we know whatever we do, we do for the glory, for the kingdom, knowing he is watching and an account shall be given on our behalf. God bless you. Anyone with just a question, one question, and we're going to close. Or any no. comment? Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. I have something to just the contribution. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank you so, so much for the teach for this teaching. I just want to say that there's more I have to work on because 
my goal is to make heaven. I, there's more I have to really work on. Mm-hmm. From, mm-hmm. from the teaching of today, I have really worked on certain things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I'm really grateful. I'm grateful. Amen. I still have a lot to do. Thank you, Vaso. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. It's not only you. All of us, including me, your pastor, I also have work to do every single day. I pray that God help me because I don't want to be a bridge that will cause others to make it into the kingdom. And at the end, I'm washed away and I'm not part of that. I want to be one of those people who make it into the kingdom. I want to meet all of you. I want to be there too and will congratulate each other and say, yeah, we suffered, but now we made it here we are today. So let's keep on pushing together, including me, your pastor. I want to make it too. I'm striving too, fighting my own battles too. So let's all fight our own battles and continue to work our own salvation. Yes, Theo, go ahead. You know, it's really uh, amazing how even after all we've done, God still prepares something so amazing for us. <laughs> Thank you, Theo. Yes, it is. Yeah. And I mean, it's exciting that life is not just uh, being here and then you die and that's the end of it. No, there is life after death. There's definitely life after death. It was my joy this week as I was ministering to one of the uh, our sisters who went to be with the Lord and just the joy of saying in the final moments, I had the opportunity to say, do you want to repeat one more time just in case? just in case you lost it just one more time invite jesus to come in your heart because i want to meet you there you can go ahead of me but i'm coming too you know it was just that encouragement that reminder and as i read the book of revelations i'm even more encouraged to say lord help me because i want to make it i just wanted to add one thing pastor um as you read Hebrews 11, verse 13, it really did something to me tonight because I just always consider myself a person of faith, but I realized, like Sister Priscilla said, how much work I have to do because that verse was so powerful to me to think that all those people who are considered in the hall of faith, they didn't even see the things that they were promised, yet they still died with so much faith. And I just thought how many times we don't see see things and we give up or we give up get upset and it's like these people were promised so much and they didn't even see it yet they still had just as much faith so that really has stuck with me um I've read that passage before but it did something to me tonight so I'm just thankful for this bible study and just these nuggets of knowledge that you're providing us to just live a better life and be better people so thank you praise god thank you Osi. god bless you Anyway, we thank God tonight one more time and also now close us with a word of prayer.